Welcome to Dateline Health. This is Fred Lippman coming to you from Nova Southeastern University. As you can see, I, I just took off my mask. Uh, I don't know when and where uh, this particular program will time out on the schedule, but uh, I can tell you one thing. Uh, masks are not, uh, they, don't, they don't belong to any party or affiliation. They belong to the human spirit. And uh, hopefully uh, you uh, consciously protect yourself and protect your family and neighbors. Anyway, uh, we have a wonderful show today. As you know, uh, these uh, topics come from you, the, uh, the, the viewing audience. And uh, there's been a lot of comments to us about understanding uh, heart failure. The, the ABCs uh, of CHF, uh, which is cardiac heart failure, and we have experts here. So let me uh, introduce first uh, Dr. Uh, Reina, uh, who is uh, a, the medical director of the Heart Failure Services and the Advanced Heart Failure and Transplant Cardiology at Broward Health Medical Center. Welcome, Dr. Reina. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Very happy to be here today. Very pleased to know that uh, you're here and uh, uh, we discussed beforehand uh, your uh, multiplicity of training sites and the longstanding uh, involvement in uh, your uh, skill and your knowledge in the area of uh, heart failure and the issue of transplant cardiology. So let me then also introduce uh, our, our second or shall we say side-by-side -side guest is uh, Kara Bayarin, uh, who is an MBA, which means that she uh, has a master's in business administration, and she's the regional manager of the wellness initiatives and cardiopulmonary rehabilitation, I would assume, at Broward Health, correct? Correct. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Dr. Reyna, talk to us. What are the primal causes of heart failure? So heart failure, you know, it's a, a disease that uh, is basically described as a syndrome and it usually has uh, underlying causes, which are mostly, you know, cardiac uh, coronary disease is one of them. Uh, some patients have heart failure because they have a cardiomyopathy, which is a weakening of the heart muscle for other reasons. Some are genetic reasons, um, meaning that it was, you know, um, in, the, in the familial hereditary uh, line. And other times is uh, there is you no know, uh, underlying, um, you know, finding of, of the actual reason for the heart muscle to weaken and to cause, you know, this cardiomyopathy that then leads to heart failure. So um, other things that can cause heart failure are things like cancer treatments, uh, chemotherapy, um, you know, some patients that have breast cancer or different types of other cancers that undergo some uh, chemotherapeutic agents are, you know, more prone to causing um, heart failure and cardiomyopathies. And um, as well, if you have a history of alcohol abuse, if you have a history of cocaine abuse, um, some you know, drugs are more toxic, toxic to the heart and therefore can also uh, cause heart failure. And I, I think you left out tobacco, didn't you? Tobacco can cause you know, coronary disease uh, and in that way it can cause heart failure uh, indirectly um, from having blocked arteries from, you know, from tobacco use which is, uh, you know, very detrimental in every way. Uh, so I always, you know, all my smoker patients, I, I emphasize to them that they're at three to four time higher chance of having a heart attack uh, from tobacco use. And when they do have a heart attack, that weakens the heart and causes heart failure. So, yes. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, Broward Health has for many, many years had the, uh, the cardiac center for... Uh, 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 the excellence in cardiac care, uh, it's been, uh, I guess, nearly 25, almost 30 years of being involved in uh, specific cardiac care. Uh, so uh, I would assume that you have a whole uh, group of um, people that are working collaboratively uh, at, your, at uh, Broward Health. So would you like to get into that a bit? 
Yes, of course. Um, you know, we have a very strong cardiac uh, team here at Brower Health and uh, the, my colleagues who, you know, who I, um, I you know, I, I, I dearly uh, appreciate all they do for my patients and their patients uh, are very involved in the care of my heart failure patients. Um, you know, I have colleagues that do imaging, that do interventions, that do, um, you know, valve procedures, which is one of the latest technologies we're doing here. Um, you know, the transcatheter uh, aortic valve replacement, and then we also do the mitral clips. Uh, those are mostly done by our uh, surgeon and, and some of the interventional cardiologists. We also have electrophysiologists who do all kinds of advanced procedures. We do something called a watchman device where we actually, um, you know, for patients that have certain arrhythmias and they cannot be on blood thinners, we, we do these um, procedures to, you know, to be able to stop the, the anticoagulations. Uh, so I, I work, you know, day by day with all these different uh, specialists, you know, within my specialty of cardiology at the center of excellence to, you know, to get these patients the right, you know, therapy that they need in order to help their heart conditions. Uh, so I'm very, I'm very thankful and very pleased to have them on board with me. And of course, the cardiac rehab, which is amazing. And, and we have uh, Carol, who's leading that. And, you know, she can tell us further about that. Well, talking about cardiac rehab, we have uh, the regional manager uh, in uh, Cara Boyarin uh, with us today. And uh, Ms. Boyarin, uh, you want to talk about uh, the wellness initiatives and the cardio uh, rehab issues? Yeah, when um, the CH CHF patients come to us many times, they have chronic fatigue, they're deconditioned, um, they have levels of depression. So at our cardiac rehab program, um, we pride ourselves at um, providing like a 360 wellness program for them. Um, we provide them education and support with uh, exercise therapy. And then they meet with a behavioral health specialist to address the depression and anxiety and maybe reviewing the lifestyle changes that they need to make. And then they meet with one of our uh, dietitians, registered dietitians. We have a multidisciplinary approach to our patients, working with our um, cardiologists, um, even our respiratory therapists are involved, our dietitians, our nurses, our exercise uh, therapists, so. It's a great program and with many, um, if, if the patient is motivated and adheres to the program, they will see the change. Several clinical trials have uh, shown the benefit of uh, cardiac rehab improving the quality of life in our patients and Dr. Reyna's patients. Do you have uh, at uh, the Broward Health System I'm not just talking about the, the medical, the one medical center, I'm talking about the system itself. Do you have uh, venues where uh, uh, cardiac rehab uh, can be uh, secured? Currently, we only have cardiac rehab at Broward Health Medical Center. Um, we have not um, placed that at the other uh, sister hospitals, but we're looking at that. Because, you know, I mean, the... Uh, the only reason I bring it up is because my next question is going to be for Dr. Reyna, but, uh, you know, with, uh, with the interruption to our uh, natural daily functions uh, because of the pandemic and the uh, imposition of, uh, of, uh, of this fear and, and also, I guess you could say, uh, willingness for people to protect themselves, their families, and others. We have seen um, a decrease in, in the volume. It has recently picked up. We do provide um, the ability to meet with our educational um, staff and team through, through Zoom or through Microsoft Teams to provide that support. Um, but right now, um, 
we are seeing an incline in our volume due to where we are in the pandemic, but there was a significant drop off for, for some time. Have you seen that type of uh, problem that uh, is inherent to your uh, cardiac program? Yes, so certainly during the pandemic for the past year, patients have been hesitant to come in into the office, um, you know, and for that matter to anything, you know, related testing or cardiac rehab. Uh, we have been very good and proactive at facilitating telehealth appointments uh, where we see those patients, you know, it's not the same um, as seeing them in person, of course, uh, especially for heart failure patients, I like to examine them in, in you know, listen to their lungs, listen to their heart, look at their extremities and look for their neck veins to be see if they're distended. But at least, you know, if, if we cannot do the complete physical exam, at least I can see them on, on televisits and be able to, you know, see, show me your legs. I want to see your, you know, I want to see their face and their color and see how they're, how they're doing. And just by the way that they're talking to me, I get an idea of, you know, what's going on. So I think we have been very fortunate here for our health that we have been able to offer telehealth uh, for these patients during uh, these hard times uh, of the pandemic. Um, the patients have, you know, over and over, they have asked that they don't want to come into the building and they don't want to come in for testing because they want to, uh, they want to prevent exposures. And we um, obviously we are doing our best to, you know, to avoid that and to facilitate the telecommunications uh, in order to keep them safe and, you know, and, and healthy. Um, uh, we also provide educational sessions, uh, as uh, Carol is saying, uh, you know, on, on meetings, virtual meetings. Uh, we do that for heart failure, uh, where we provide a support group and educational session for all the sister hospitals and for all the patients here at Medical Center. Uh, via WebEx. So that's another, you know, another way of them connecting with us. And maybe it's not the actual physical exercise, but at least we're, you know, educating them and saying to them, these are the things that you should be doing at home. You know, we have Kara gives us some of these lectures and we have the dietitians, the pharmacists, some of the uh, physical rehabilitation, uh, you know, um, uh, members are also participating. So I think it's very informative for the patients. Um, and although we cannot have them, you know, we don't have them physically and at the facility, we are still educating them and trying to get the word out on the things that they should be doing in order to stay healthy and preventing them from coming into the hospital for unexpected um, admissions and visits. Ms. Boyarin, uh, what do you see with reference to that? Because again, you're talking about wellness initiatives and uh, rehab. You have to have the people there for, for it to happen. So back to what Dr. Reyna was saying is that we at Broward Health have done a, a, a better job of realizing that and adding more uh, digital platforms on our website and reaching out to the community that way. Uh, we have... Uh, taped several different videos, placed it on our website, have it on our app for specifically from our registered dietitians. We are reaching out to the community, just recently providing quarterly screenings um, for free to the community. We worked with Sun Sentinel and the Prime Expo and reached out through it digitally to provide some of our health experts, which included nutrition and Dr. Reyna was involved with that. So it allowed us to be in those individuals' homes to provide the education because that is the first part of it is the education and realization of that I might need help. And then with um, us being here, they can reach out and see if telehealth is available for them. And if there is a program, which we do have a program here, it's individualized, they do have to come here, but um, we take all the precautions with masks and they meet with a dietitian, a behavioral health specialist and a certified personal trainer. And it's, it's a weight loss program that we provide, but there is the, the beginning stages of the education on our our, on our platforms at Broward Health. Of, of course, you know, of course we know that the cardiac disease is really 
something that spreads throughout the whole uh, age spectrum. But with, uh, and I would assume, and Dr. Rainer, you could uh, offer a comment if I'm incorrect once I ask this question, but the, uh, there seems to be a, a much greater uh, uh, emphasis on uh, heart failure in people who are, in quotes, the mature in elements. I never want to say old people because I'm old. Uh, uh, but I, what I'm saying is, is that uh, you have, you have uh, multiple uh, venues here in your area of responsibility called Broward County uh, where you have very large adult communities, retirement communities that have various uh, venues for workouts, for meetings, for things of that nature. Have you migrated any of your programmatic entities into these venues? Yes, so we actually have, uh, we have, you know, reached out to some of the, uh, you know, local communities of, you know, um, senior, uh, you know, patients and um, are providing education to those communities and, and, you know, talking to them about heart failure, talking to them about, you know, prevention and cardiac rehab and doing, uh, you know, nutrition uh, as well. So um, that is something that we um, have done um, probably, I wanna say it's been happening probably twice a year. Um, you know, probably, you know, um, we also do the quarterly cardiac rehab uh, preventive, um, preventive outreach where, you know, we, we market to the community and then we have them come in on a day for screening uh, tests, uh, including cholesterol. And that's an opportunity for, you know, Cara, uh, Cara and her team to discuss with them all these, you know, and myself, I'm involved as well, uh, discuss all the, um, all the heart failure prevention and just cardiac prevention overall and stroke prevention, which is also uh, something important. So we're constantly doing our reach to the community in regards to, you know, to cardiac disease. Uh, something else I wanted to add uh, for cardiac rehab, you know, it's not only the heart failure patients, it's also patients who've had heart attacks, who've had uh, heart surgery of any type, who've had any type of stents in their coronary arteries. Um, all those patients are welcome to the cardiac rehab, you know, and as Cara mentioned, there is a significant amount of data that over the years we have, you know, compiled to say that it helps uh, improve survival in patients with heart disease. And it also uh, decreases uh, depression significantly. And there's outcomes as well in, in terms of weight loss and, uh, and obviously, um, you know, just mental health improvement. There is, uh, you know, with, with the, um... I, and of course, I know uh, we a lot of venues, Broward Health, and a lot of your sister programmatic entities in South Florida. Uh, because I know, for example, that you uh, you uh, have a relationship with transplant units that are in that are certified here in South Florida. So obviously, you're working with one venue and another venue, but the uh, the the issue really is um, with, with all of the increase in technology, a good amount of what you're able to uh, deal with might be available to you rather readily. Uh, everything from, you know, I mean, oversimplistic thing, blood pressure, uh, heartbeat, things of that nature. I'm being oversimplistic. But there's, there's an awful lot that, that can come your way that, uh, that normally your stethoscope and otherwise uh, would, be, uh, would be used in your office or your, your, your medical uh, facility. Uh, do you see that impacting your, uh, your, the delivery of your services in the very near future? Uh, I think so. I mean, in a good way, I would say uh, patients obviously are more educated. They're more um, you know, up to date with technology. You know, I have patients that oftentimes will bring me 
a lot of them actually bring me their blood pressure logs and their phones because, you know, the different blood pressure machines uh, do document, um, you know, this data and it gets transferred over to their application, their phone applications. Uh, Omron is one of the brands that really does that well and many others, but um, they come already, you know, and they email me their numbers and, you know, um, their, their weights and, you know, the health, um, the health, um, Agencies also go, the home health agencies go to their homes and monitor all this data and it gets facilitated over uh, to me. So when I've been, you know, seeing these patients on televisits, uh, these are things that I am grateful to have, um, you know, these resources where I, you know, my stethoscope is not necessarily there to listen to their hearts and, and their lungs, but I can gather all this other information that can supplement some of, of this uh, information uh, to me. Um, some patients also have access to EKGs. You know, it's, it's interesting how they go online and they look for all these resources and the Apple Watch and, you know, the, the cardiac um, application. So they can, you know, they, they can screenshot their um, own rhythms and send them over to me and I can see what they're, you know, what's going on with that. So hopefully, you know, soon we can have something where they can just place on their chest and listen to their own heart sounds and <laughs> send them over to me. <laughs> and that would, you know, replace, uh, or, you know, nothing, I, I think nothing replaces a physical visit with a patient, you know, it, it, that is still very important to have that one-on-one -on -one with a patient and really be able to have a thorough ability to do a thorough physical exam. But, you know, in the times of needs and sometimes when patients, you know, especially heart failure patients that, you know, sometimes they're very uh, deconditioned, they're very weak, uh, their heart is so, you know, at risk and, and it's so hard for them to make it out of their home and come to the visits that, you know, all these tools are needed in order to care for them, you know, effectively from home. I'll give you an example. I just saw a patient yesterday who had been doing televisits with him for probably close to four months because he lives in a second story. And when he left rehab, he was, um, you know, the, the transportation took him over to his apartment and he was weak and couldn't make it down from his home. You know, he didn't have an elevator in, in the apartment building. Uh, so he couldn't make it down to come to the doctor's appointment. So um, I was doing televisits with him until I saw him yesterday that he was actually strong enough and physical therapy had worked with him greatly at home and was able to come to the, to the appointment. Um, so, you know, all these um, tools and things were, you know, I, um, I depend on really to care for these patients who cannot come to the physical appointment and, and to the visits. We're down to the last three minutes of the show, and I just want to get into uh, uh, Cora by Aaron. Uh, when you when you see your the folks at the rehabilitation venue, wherever it might be, whether it be directly there or on on uh, some uh, shall we say technology uh, enhanced visit. Uh, do you keep uh, metrics that uh, will will lead you to refer them to uh, Dr. Reina? We we provide uh, daily sessions and uh, monthly progresses to all our cardiologists, especially Dr. Reina, with the CHF patients that she that we work with, and uh, we track from blood pressure to heart rate to EKGs to glucose right. and um, all their um, lipid, the lipid profiles. And we're constantly working with them daily on their progression. And um, back to what Dr. Reyna said with the, and is the technology just helps motivate them more and helps us to show them the progression. And it really helps with the commitment and we provide the progression reports to them and to the, to the cardiologists. So that also helps with uh, the motivation and commitment in the program. That's wonderful because really, uh, Dr. Reyna, I'm sure that you know that the, the, the finest uh, emotion that comes to you is the caring and the, uh, the improvement of your patient's uh, health. So uh, we, I, I, I know the, uh, the, the hard work that you put into your education and your training. And I'm sure that, uh, that uh, getting information to help your patient is, is paramount to what you do, correct? 
Yes, of course. It's very important to gather. The more we gather, the more we can better care for them and, and uh, provide, you know, better, um, you know, uh, plans and assessments and, and be able to be more comprehensive for their care. You know, when, when a patient has heart, uh, heart failure, congestive heart failure, they also tend to have many other comorbidities. So the more comprehensive we are, such as with lipids, with, uh, you know, diabetes management and hemoglobin A1Cs and things like that, um, it would, you know, it all comes together at the end and, and we're able to better, you know, care for, for them as a, as a team. You know, it really takes a village. It takes a multidisciplinary team to care for heart failure patients. Well, congratulations. Uh, we're down to the last 30 seconds of this show. I want to thank you very much, uh, Dr. Reyna, uh, Medical Director of Heart Failure Services at uh, Broward Health Medical Center, and uh, uh, Cora uh, Boyarin, the Regional Manager for Wellness Initiatives and Cardio uh, Pulmonary uh, Rehab. We, we thank you both very much for uh, helping the people of our community. Uh, we wish you well. Uh, I uh, know what a task it is. Uh, to have to uh, provide these services during uh, these hard times, and uh, but uh, you you have both uh, have seen hard times before, so uh, you you uh, your institution is providing wonderful facilities, and I wish you both well. Uh, and I want to tell the audience one more time that this little piece of uh, I guess you could say uh, cloth and otherwise could uh, save uh, you a lot of trouble in life, maybe, and maybe uh, the people that you respect. I, I know that it's a lot of questions as to whether there's a, a right of, of freedom to wear it or not free wear it, but you know, you want to save your life and your, your loved one's lives. My suggestion is take a, take a good thought and a good look at uh, wearing your mask when you have to. Remember, this show is called Dateline Health. We come to you from Nova Southeastern University. I always tell you that you've got to take good care of yourself. That means you've got to communicate with your doctors. You've got to give information, whether it's Dr. Rayner or otherwise. They, they need the information to be able to help you. So don't let things go by. Take good care of yourself. And remember, as I always say, if you want to have a question, answer, or otherwise, there's an email address and a telephone number right here. And uh, until next time, my name is Fred Lippman. We come to you from Nova Southeastern University. Until next time, see you.